welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. I was recently traded this cool Axe Effects 3 system. This is not a sponsored episode by any means, but I thought I would go ahead and create the Bonehead's Guide to this thing, because I've always wanted to try one of these things out, I've just always been slightly intimidated. How do you hook it up? Does it actually sound as good as a tube amp? Things like that. So in today's episode, I'm going to show you how easy it is to hook up and show you the majority of all the presets that come in this thing stock. I'm not going to show you how to make your own or download other people's. This is just kind of a quick start guide to get you over that first initial learning hump to see if one of these would be right for you. Okay, so plugging this in, it's not as bad as I initially thought. There is a quick start guide that shows you how to connect it just from this to your speakers, but if you're wanting to do recording like I want to do, you basically just set this up the same way you do your mics. So if you're used to doing a traditional setup, like I am with an SM57 or whatever you're using, essentially you just take that XLR cable that would go to your mic and you plug that into the output section. And then from there, you run these XLR cables into whatever audio interface you're using. I've got the Apollo 20 and then from there you run your monitors from those jacks into your monitors and from there you should be all set. All you have to do is connect your power supply right there and then your guitar can either be plugged in in the back right here or they also have a jack on the front if you prefer and you can also run this out of headphones. So I think you can technically just run power to this and connect your instrument and have a nice set of headphones and not actually need anything else. So that could be great just for practicing. Just a quick rundown of how to use this thing. So we've got this, this is just your scroll wheel and it'll take you through all the different presets here and there's 383 settings from this stock from the factory now you can add more if you want it looks like it goes up to 511 that's a lot of presets now any of these things that you see you can actually go through and modify as well and some of them have multiple voicings you can just select that with your navigation device right here so there's the crunch of that then you got cranked drive as well as solo and then something that i really liked here is if you press on the a button right here it actually gets you a tuner and you can see how that works right there if you turn that off your tuner is also up here so you're gonna see that no matter what when you're playing and then you can also go in with your layout control right here and once again use your navigation to turn things on and off like there's a wah in this setting if you like everything else about that setting except for the wah you can just go through and turn that off or just delete it like that you can get home there or edit the settings kind of like what we were just doing it you can store it as well so that's always your preset default and then what i really like is they actually have a built-in metronome with this tempo and you can control how fast that goes with your value wheel and it looks like in order to use that you use your c control to turn the volume up looks like we can also use this one at that point cool and if you're worried that this isn't going to fit into your space, it's 19 inches wide, including the face plate, or 17 and a quarter inches without the mounting plate. It's 10 inches long, but 11 inches if you count the handles at the front, and it's 5 and 1 8 inches thick, and weighs 15 pounds, 4 and a half ounces. So let's go ahead. We're in the long haul. We'll go through all these settings. In the beginning, I'll run through some of the different voicings, but let's face it, almost 400 effects. Towards the end, we'll just do one from each.
So what are my final thoughts on this thing? There were so many different presets straight out of the factory. Now you'd really have to do exactly what I did, play through them all and then write down a list of your favorite ones. But to answer people's questions, do you think you're gonna do more tinkering if you buy one of these or more playing? Personally, I find that you would just find your set like five or 10 of these that you'll always use. And then you can set them to whatever numbers you want to easily get to them. So I think after your first week or a month or so of going through all these things, then you would know exactly what you want and that would not be a problem. I personally really enjoyed that this had a built-in metronome and the detune feature that you can sometimes get on these settings is really nice. So say you want to play your guitar at regular E standard tuning, but you want to hear it in D standard tuning, you can do that. So if you have a Floyd Rose, you don't have to worry about messing up your whole guitar just to get the sound that you want. Does it sound as good as a tube amp in my opinion? Um, may maybe not quite exactly like it, but I feel that I could potentially use this in demos simply because of that bypass phase where you don't have any effects at all. I thought that clean tone sounded pretty good. Just add a little bit of reverb and I think that would definitely be serviceable. I mean, this thing's not bad, but, but I think I might need to stick to tradition. I mean, if AxeFX wants to send me one of these for my Make Progress Monday series, that'd be great because I accidentally sold this before I made this video. Otherwise, I probably just would have kept it around. But this is great for somebody who's a novice at recording because it skips all that, you know, miking up the cabinets, making sure you buy the right amp, things like that. This will get you so many tones. 
So I do understand why these are just becoming commonplace, especially for the rigs that you gig with these things in, because they're what, around 15 pounds, super lightweight. You can just plug these into the front of the house or something. I don't know too much about that, but there's a lot of usable tones. I mean, there's also a bunch of garbage in here too, but <laughs> it depends what you're trying to play. So if you need something that's lightweight and portable, has a bunch of different sounds and is easy to record with, I think you're gonna be pretty happy with the Axe FX3. However, it might not replace a tube amp for me, but who knows, maybe if I were actually to take this and plug it into a powered cabinet, maybe then I would like it because there's a little bit more air moving. <laughs> so ultimately, if you're not chasing after tradition, having a tube amp, and you want the ease of reliability of being able to record this thing just by plugging in and going, I think this is going to be a good choice for a lot of people. And goodness knows there's enough effects built into this thing if you want to do like a cover of an Eddie Van Halen song or Black Hole Sun, any of the ones that you saw that there were presets there, you'll definitely be able to do that as well as download other people's presets. So I can see why there's a market for something like this, and hopefully this video helps you decide whether it's right for you or not, because they are rather expensive. So thank you Troglodytes, Dice for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.